Okay, so now that we've gone through all of our steps of our hypothesis testing, I need to do just a little bit of expansion on when we reject and when we fail to reject. Uh, because if you remember so far, let me, let me go ahead and put up a little bit of a diagram. Okay, so whenever we do a hypothesis test, we can either reject or fail to reject. Okay, now I had told you that we reject when our p-value is less than alpha, and we fail to reject when our p-value is actually greater than alpha. Now this is a true statement. Um, when we are talking about saying greater than or less than, when our alternative hypothesis either says greater than or less than. Okay, so here is why. Let me, let me do a quick drawing. So if we get a distribution, we say that this is our hypothesized mean or it could be a hypothesized proportion. And if we are able to get, so this is our alpha, we say that alpha equals 0.05, sorry, that's to the edge. But if we're able to get to 0.05, and let's say our specific value that we get gets a p-value that equals 0.03. Well, here we would reject the null hypothesis because our p-value is less than 0.05. So all of that should be standard for right now. Now it changes just a hair when we say not equals to. All right, so here's, here's the difference. When we say not equals to, we really need to do comparing the p-value that we get, and that needs to be less than alpha divided by two. And same thing, we re failed to reject when the p-value is greater than alpha divided by two. Okay, so here's why. Here's why we do this alpha divided by two. Remember, we threw all of our error up on one tail when we did greater than or less than. If it was less than, we throw it to the other side. But for two tail, when we do this, we're saying we really don't know if it's greater than or less than. Both are problematic, so we're gonna just say not equals to. So we'll say this is our mu not still. Well, we threw alpha divided by two to one end and alpha divided by two on the other end. Now, if we still are testing at like this alpha of 0.05, then this would be 0.025. So let's say we did this exact same test only instead of it doing as a one tail test, one tail we rejected because our alpha was 0.05 and our p-value was 0.03, so our p-value was less than alpha. Here, if we had done a two tail test instead, we would need to compare our p-value, so let's put up that p-value again, of p-value equals 0.03. All right, so here we would say this p-value is 0.03 which actually is greater than our alpha divided by two. It's because we put error on both sides, we gotta compare it to the error that it's closest to. All right, so we've got this alpha divided by two, so now our p-value of 0.03 is not enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So we just need to remember this, that when we are figuring out whether we're rejecting or fail to reject, if we say less than or greater than in our alternative hypothesis, we are going to be comparing p-value to alpha if it, the p-value is less than alpha, we reject. p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject. However, if we are talking about greater than, or sorry, if we're talking about not equal to, then we need to compare our p-value to alpha divided by two. If it's less than alpha divided by two, we still reject. But if the p-value is greater than alpha divided by two, we fail to reject the null hypothesis.